Hey developers, today we're going to have a quick tour of Nux.js version 2.4. It just came out. I'm going to talk about some of the features, the blog post that came out, and we're going to take a quick look at a few programs. So stay tuned. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer with several years of software development experience. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in Action book, which you can find in the description below. And by the way, if you're interested in that, if you click on that link in the description below for, it says, get my get the first chapter of my book for free, you can sign up for my mailing list and I'll send it to you. You can check it out. It's free and you also get a cool Vue.js cheat sheet and also uh, an Ember.js cheat sheet. All right, so let's begin here. Uh, first, if you haven't noticed, uh, Nux.js has been rolling. They have been working super hard on it and they keep on coming up with more and more updates to it. If you don't know, I created an awesome Nuxt course, which I'm actually updating for version 2.4 now. The Nuxt course that I created is actually a two-in-one course. I do half Vue.js and half Nuxt. But this is, uh, when I did it, it was version one. And now it, we're already up to 2.4 and I'm actually in the process of upgrading that. So if you guys are interested in that, I put a link in the description below. You guys can uh, check that out and uh, purchase it if you like. But uh, you can see here way back in the day, actually, here's the release notes, excuse me. Here's the release notes for everything. So you can see all the way back here, there was alpha, and then they came out with version one. And then the real, let's see here, if we could scroll up a little bit here to version one, that was on January 8th, 2018. And then they did 1.1, 1 1.111, 1 1 January 13th, 1.2, 1.3. So they have been every few months in August, 1.4 came out in 2018. And then their big release was 2.0, which they came out on September 21st. And that uh, had all the updates, obviously, of the previous versions. It also updated to Webpack 4. Um, had some minor watch query updates. Most of the updates were like configuration, um, so like updates to the Nux config, a few enhancements out of render context. Wasn't too big of an update, but it was kind of cumulative of all the little updates they did between one and two. Then they went to 2.1, 2.2, and the big one, which if we kind of scroll up a little bit, these were just kind of minor things they did, but the big one that that they did is 2.4. So if you look at 2.4, one of the some of the things that they added to it was first TypeScript. So really cool that the TypeScript support has landed. They created a new library called NuxTS and NuxTS Edge, and they had a Nux TypeScript example as well as the code sandbox. So if we look here, here is the code sandbox, probably a little bit hard to see. I don't know if I can make it any bigger, but uh, this is really cool. So one of the premier examples that they always show for the next community and a lot of communities that have front end frameworks do this is they show how to use their framework with Hacker News. If you don't know, Hacker News is at news.ycombinator.com. It's a website that's really tech focused. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people creating businesses because Y Combinator is an accelerator post on there, but you also get a, a pretty awesome tech community in there too. So they, uh, they created like a, basically an application that uses the APIs from the Y Combinator uh, Hacker News and they used it to create their own app with it. And in this case they used uh, they use TypeScript. So you could see, if you look here, if you look at the package.json, they're using Nux.js Axios, and they're using Express, and they're using Nux.ts Edge, the latest. So that's the libraries they're using. And they're using Jest and Prettier and Stylus, and here's some more configurations. So that's cool that they're using using this new library. And you see here, actually the creators of Nux helped create this kind of example app. So you can see how it works. You can see here, this is how you pretty much do a TypeScript here. Let's see here, I, can, I can't really make it too much bigger, 
but the, the way they did it is you add these new decorators, this at component decorator and extends view and they do at props and that's your decorator for properties. That's how you pass stuff in. And then you have a pluralize here and then you still have the same kind of directives. Just like if I did a video a little while back on TypeScript on Vue.js, very similar. You have the same directorators here for vshow, v4. It's just a little different the way um, this, this is imported in. You see here's the item list view. Here's the props. They use gets and sets in here. Here's the item view. We have props. Uh, so we have server cache key. This is part of SSR and caching, which I'm, I won't get into. This is not really idiomatic of, of Vue.js, but you can use this render function. So they use this lazy wrapper, I guess for the spinner. Sometimes you can use this to create really simple components. And that they actually had this props loading in here. Here is the props for it, uh, the spinner.view. Uh, so you get, it's pretty cool that you can use TypeScript. This is a great example. I'll leave it in the description below. You can see here's the pages for it. This is like how they're generating all the different routes. So like, let's say I click on uh, the comments here. And now you can see the comments are all listed on in, in the sandbox here in, in the app itself. So they're grabbing the information. You can kind of look under the covers a little bit and see how they're doing it. They have this cache TS. They're running this from the Nux config. They're adding a middleware. Uh, let's see here. If you look at Nux config, you're, they're using api.hnpwa.com. And by the way, are they, this is also a progressive web app too. So they're using Nux.js PWA using Axios, as you expect. And this is how it's set up. So pretty cool. So that's that's a really good example of using TypeScript. One thing uh, they, they also did there, let me open Okay, so we have our directory here. Let's go ahead and start it. If we do npm run dev, it'll run our next server. And by the way, I'm just using the sample app that they mentioned in here, this uh, types, Nux TypeScript example app which makes it really easy. So after it's run, you can see here, I have on localhost 3000, it's running. So you can see here, if I change it, let's say I change this hello world with hello world next example, and I save it. You can see here, it goes ahead and updates it. And what it's doing too, by the way, one of the cool new things about Nux 2.4 uh, other than having TypeScript and something called prefetching, but it has this hot module reload, that's HMR, and best practices for store. So that means if you make changes, it doesn't have to have the whole app reload. So if you've been on other frameworks where the whole app is reload, that's pretty annoying. Uh, so you could have, let's say, I don't know, let's say we have a style tag here, and inside here, we put in body. Well, let's do here. Let's see, there's a div tag here. So we'll put div and we'll do, you know, color aqua and we'll save it. You can see it saved right there, but it actually didn't have to reload the whole app. The HMR you can see is running down in the console. It just did it uh, manually for us without us having to do anything. So if I do um, green and save it, it automatically updates and the whole app doesn't have to reload. And it's smart because it also handles this store. So for Stel so if it reloads using HMR, it doesn't clear out the store, which is perfect. And if you've ever had to deal with that, that's really awful if every time you have HMR enabled that it clears out your store. There's also updated Vitor support. You can see here, I actually don't have Vitor configured right now, but if I did, I should be able to do stuff like that. Uh, it has, you can do different ports. So the next wants to listen to a port which is already used. It'll, it'll warn you to development and listen to a free port instead, which is pretty neat. And it'll throw an error in production. And then it'll actually install missing dependencies. So if you try to use something that isn't there, it'll give you a warning. Auto detection of modern bundles. So it'll give you some errors, um, some more detection there. If you use dash dash, well, you no longer need to use dash dash modern. 
and then it has some plugin and server extensions. So I haven't had to deal with this too much, but when you start installing a lot of plugins to Nuxt, you'll have some that only work in the client and some that work on the server. And there used to be this flag called SSR false. Now you just put in if it's server, client, or all. And there's some more module support commands. I don't think that's too interesting. Post CSS and view components. You can now use language post CSS and your view components will apply to all your syntax anyways to resolve alias like that, but the language attribute enable autocomplete and syntax highlighting for some IDEs. So no more extensions for style sheets. You don't have to put .scss. SSR bundle increases. So a lot of cool stuff. I mean, I would highly recommend checking out uh, checking out the uh, demo like I'm doing right here and just playing around with it and see what you guys think of it or looking at the code sandbox like I did before. Um, one other thing to take a look at is if you just use Nuxt.js, um, you should probably be using the create Nuxt app. So let's take a look at what happens there. So if we are in our terminal and I just create a new app, which let me just, I'm actually, I'm in the example app right now. We'll go to next, change 2.4. So I can do this command right here, which we've had for a while, it's npx create, and I can show you um, my app two. So if we look at this, it'll do some fetching. And I noticed they've been editing this menu that comes up when you create a new app with Nuxt. It doesn't give you the option to add TypeScript in there yet, but it asks you quite a few questions. So it will do that in a second after this is done loading. Okay, so it's done loading. You can see it asks you for the project name, description. We have the same ones we saw in like kind of version 1.0 earlier you have express, but now we have a few more. I think micro is probably new, express. You have now option to do um, installing PWA right off the bat. Linter is prettier. You can also select multiple ones if you like. You also have a few more custom UI frameworks, Element UI, Buify, Ant Design, iView, None, Bootstrap, Vutify, which is cool, it's all built in. You can use a custom test framework, Jest or Ava, and then you can have the same question, universal single app, and then it'll ask you name, npm or yarn, and then it'll do the installation for you, which I won't do because I already did. All right, I have a Nuxt 2.4 app here. I went ahead and already started it for you to take a look at. One interesting thing is I just installed this with the npx create. And if I look at the package.json, it actually came with 2.3.4 instead of 2.4. But uh, I'm assuming that'll be updated very shortly. Um, if I run it, I did npm run dev. It should be running right now, um, probably in local po post 3000. So if I go to 3000, here it is. Here's my Vutify Nuxt.js template already installed for us. So everything's working pretty good. All right, well, that's just a quick overview of Nuxt 2.4.0. Hope you guys try it out. Let me know in the comments what you like about it. Maybe I'll do a full-fledged example later. Um, I'll definitely be updating my course with some more example information, but I'd love to hear what you guys like about it. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.